to serve our communities, and to be examples of Christ among our community. Greetings. Uh, today is the beginning of Catholic Schools Week, so I'd like to reflect at the beginning here about Catholic Schools Week, where we celebrate it, and then I'm going to ask you to help me with the rest of the homily over today's scripture readings. First of all, uh, Catholic Schools Week. Uh, anytime you have a celebration, uh, it's not just an excuse for a party, there's always a reason for it. And I think the most important reason for the celebration of Catholic Schools Week is simply gratitude. And we aren't uh, spontaneously grateful people. We have to be reminded to be grateful to our parents, you know, to our friends, but especially to God. And we needed this reminder this year again to be grateful to God and to your parents, to the faculty, uh, to the benefactors, those who do good to the diocese, all those people who make Catholic schools possible. So we're grateful to God for that. And it's an occasion for the students to express that gratitude. So I hope that this week you will say thank you to the school administrators, to your faculty, but also maybe in a very special way to your parents who sacrifice so much. Uh, to recommit ourselves to what a Catholic school is all about. And this recommitment especially is important for the faculty and the administration, but also for the students. You know, Catholic schools are about three, about many things, but three very important things. A good academic education for you, right? Uh, a good uh, human education for you, you know, Catholic schools are supposed to be about human development. It's not enough just to develop your minds, not enough just to develop your bodies by athletics. We have to help develop one another, and we as well as help you to become good human beings. And uh, it's a rich experience uh, that leads to a development of a good human being. And so we hope the school recommits itself this week to the academic and human development. But in a very special way, the reason we have Catholic schools is to develop you spiritually. You know, a person is not complete as a human being unless she and he also has a place in his or her life for God and for the ethical requirements that flow from that relationship with God, which basically means for Christians that we treat one another as brothers and sisters because God is our Father. If God's our Father, that means we're brothers and sisters to one another and every human being deserves our respect and honor because that person has dignity as a child. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> well, we have two choices. I can randomly pick someone from the crowd, or we can have the reader, who knows they're reading better than anybody here, to be the one. Well, Matt, 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 are you a senior? Yes. Okay, you, you're mature. And you can handle any question, right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Would you just kind of summarize to the congregation what this reading was about, just so they remember? They may not have good attention spans this time of morning. Uh, it was about Ken David's role and him becoming increasingly more powerful. Right. And who was King David? Do you know? Uh, a Christian uh, in the Old Testament. No, there weren't any Christians. We're Christians, yet, yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> See, he caught himself very quickly. I wouldn't expect you to learn this in religion class. But the reason for it, you know, you have to use your imagination. Back in those days, it was hard to get oil off something. You know, today we use soap and it comes off pretty easily. But if I took a piece of paper and I made a cross on that paper with oil, what would happen to that paper? It would get permeated by the oil, right? Would you ever be able to get it out? No, you wouldn't be able to get it. So it was seen in ancient times as a way of marking someone in a permanent uh, way. And David was kind of the symbol to be a ruler of the nation and lead peacefully. And that's a very good answer. It's a, you know, he was made a king. And each one of us is also a king. In where? Where are you the king? In God's heart. Just in God's heart. <laughs> How about your mind? Are you a king in your mind? Right now, I feel like the king. <laughs> is God absolutely forgiving? Yes. How can Jesus say, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin? I don't know. I don't understand. That. Okay. That's why this is the question every student asks who listens to the Word of God and sees this passage. Now the question, the answer would be, well, we have to figure out what is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus says that's the one sin that cannot be forgiven. 
Now, can any of you, beginning with Claire, but anybody in the congregation other than the teachers uh, and the priests that are present, tell me what is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? So, the only thing can't be forgiven. Despair. He says, is it despair? Uh, in, a, in a sense, yes, but you know, so we usually think despair means you get sad and you, you know you just give up. What is it? Like you give up hope. Well, yeah, you know, sometimes that's a psychological state where you really, everything goes so bad you just you want to despair. Um, it's really close. I mean, you gave a very good answer. Anybody else want to add to that? Yes, ma'am. Not believing in forgiveness is exactly. Did you learn that class? You just thought of that. You're, you should be a theologian. 